At the bottom of this vial, barely visible to the naked eye, is a speck of DNA. But it's not the recipe for life written into its code. It's digital computer files. Because I have a dream. An MP3 of Martin Luther King's famous speech. My poor little children. A digital photo, a PDF document, and the text of every one of Shakespeare's sonnets, written into a synthetic strand of DNA. We're using DNA instead of a DVD disc, uh, and we're using different machines to write it and to read it, but the ideas are the same. You take information, you put it in a coded form, you put it in a physical medium that's a good storage medium of one sort or another. I, mean, I never really believed it would work until the day I decoded them on my laptop, and, and it all worked out. When a music track is stored on an MP3 player, the software turns it into a string of ones and zeros. The scientists stored information using the chemical letters that make up DNA. One megabyte of computer data was stored in a strand of DNA three million letters long. A strand so short it's almost invisible. So much information can be stored that every film and TV programme ever made can be packed onto a strand of DNA that fills just one cup. At the moment, information is archived on magnetic tape. It's cheap, but it takes a lot of space and the tape degrades. So every few years, people need to copy the contents onto a fresh tape. But the entire vault here of Sky News material could be stored on a tiny ball of DNA. And as long as that's kept cold and dry, the information could be preserved for tens of thousands of years. Within just a few years, reading and writing DNA should be fast enough and cheap enough to be commercially viable. Massive libraries of information could be held in the palm of your hand. Thomas Moore, Sky News.